The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the third chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. As the people were in expectation and all questioned in their hearts concerning John, whether perhaps he were the Christ, John answered them all, I baptize you with water, but he who is mightier than I is coming, the thong of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his, clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now when all the people were baptized and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form as a dove. And a voice came from heaven, Thou art my beloved Son, with thee I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Be seated. Let's pray. You remind us constantly that you have come as one of us to save and redeem us all, to lift us up out of the darkness of sin and death and bring us into the light of salvation. Remind us each and every day, remind us every hour so that we do not forget your mercy and your grace, so that we do not let something become more important in our lives than you. Now gather us around your word, help us to hear it, and in hearing it, help us to live. We ask and pray these things in your name. Amen. Friends, grace and peace to you today from God our Father, through our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I want you to dig out your worship insert in your, in your hymnal for a minute, if you would, please. And on the very first page where it says, Brief Order for Confession and Forgiveness, um, what should be printed in red but is in italics, it says, The minister leads the con congregation in the invocation. The sign of the cross may be made by all in remembrance of their baptism. in remembrance of their baptism. That's why I and others make the sign of the cross. That's when you see a cross, it ought to remind you that you are a baptized child of God. Our baptism is our beginning point. It is not the ending point of our faith, but it is the beginning point. Most of us don't remember our baptism for we were baptized as infants. Perhaps a few of us, like myself, were baptized later in life. But baptism is something that comes to us. It is given to us. The symbolism of a child being carried to the font by its parents is a very good symbol of what is happening in baptism. For we come to the waters of baptism helpless. Without anything that we can do or offer to God in any way, shape, or form. We are baptized and others answers questions for us. We are baptized and promises are made on our behalf. We are baptized even when we can't begin to understand what it means to be a baptized child of God. Because baptism does not come from within our hearts and in our piety and then we offer it to God. Our baptism comes from God himself, joining us to the death and the resurrection of Jesus. And it's an important thing to remember, because if we forget that about baptism, then we begin to convince ourselves that salvation is some kind of a cooperative relationship between ourselves and God that we do enough good things on our part and then God says, well, good enough, I'll let you in. And that's what, not what baptism is about at all. Baptism is about the helpless coming to the only one who can help them, coming when they have no ability or right to be there, coming when they don't even know what to say, 
And if they do, they don't know how to say it. Baptism is joining us to the death and the resurrection of Jesus. And while Jesus himself did not need baptism for the forgiveness of sins, he went into the waters of baptism so that we might be joined to him. But that's the first thing that takes place in holy baptism. We are joined to the death and the resurrection of Jesus. We are joined to that reality that Jesus died and was raised on the third day. That is the reality of our baptism. That is why some Christians choose to make the sign of the cross because it reminds them that baptism begins in a death but does end in a resurrection. And as I've said before, this is the place where I agree with our Baptist brothers and sisters when they think immersion is the way to go because it is a very good symbol of what takes place in baptism. We are buried with Christ in the waters of baptism and we're drawn up out of those waters as Christ was raised from the dead. And so our baptism is not just a single point in time that we look back to. Our baptism is the daily walk of the believer. It is what we return to each and every day as Luther says in the catechism claiming the promises of mercy and forgiveness that God gives us in holy baptism. Baptism is sending us out into the life of Christ. Because Jesus was baptized in the Jordan, yes. And immediately the Spirit drove him out into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil to go into the confrontation with sin, death, and the power of a devil, to live the reality of what it means to be baptized. And so if we are baptized, it means that we too go out into the world to live the reality of faith and confront not only the grace and the mercy of God which is given to us, but confront everything that works against God that attacks us in our faith, that would lead other people away from Christ. Baptism is a call to action. It is, yes, a promise and an assurance that the grace and mercy of God is always ours, but it is a call to daily action. For Jesus tells us that we are to die daily to ourselves and be raised in him to bear our crosses, to put to death in us that which is not God, and live more fully for him. Baptism is our daily life. And so, as Christians, it is something we ought to be giving more attention to. It is something that we ought to be thinking about, not just occasionally, but each and every day. It would do us well to go back to the catechism at least once a week and read through the section on holy baptism. Not only what it is and what's taking place there, but what it means for daily living. Because as a Christian, we are called to live daily in Christ. We are called to live our baptisms. And if we just simply take baptism as a ticket that we got when we were baptized that we can punch when we come to the gates of heaven, then we miss the purpose of being baptized. Yes, it is the forgiveness of sins, but it is also living as a Christian. And of course, that's one of the greatest challenges you and I face as a Christian, is living in this world as believers. Living in the world so that the world knows and sees by the things we say and do and are that we are followers of Jesus Christ. And that is the ongoing challenge for the baptized. And if it were left simply up to us to make something of our baptism each and every day, we all know that we would fail miserably at it. If it were left up to us to live as Christians in the world, seeking and serving Christ in everything we say and do, we know we would fail miserably at it. 
because we know that sin is always attacking us. The evil one is always going after us, and they are always going to trip us up. But one of the things that we often forget about our baptism is what takes place and what comes to us in baptism. Yes, we're given faith. I'm confident that a newly baptized infant is as much as a believer as any great saint of the church. But we are also given the Holy Spirit, which is poured out upon us, which descended upon Jesus as his baptism, as God's symbol of his love and mercy. But it is also the power of the Spirit that compels us and gives us the ability to live as Christians. We do not go out into the world alone. We do not go out into the world as baptized children of God powerless. We go in the power and the mission of the Spirit, proclaiming and living and trusting that God will provide what we need to be, what we need to say, what we need to do as we live out our faith. I always tell the confirmands that it's one of the greatest miracles of life that in our baptism, not only does God give us faith in order to believe in him, but he gives us the Holy Spirit who nurtures that faith and sustains it. So that we do not have to worry, do I have enough faith? We're actually going to be studying the third article of the creed this coming Wednesday in confirmation, to which Luther's explanation begins, I believe that I cannot by my own effort or understanding, believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord, or come to him. I love that passage. I love what Luther wrote there. I believe that I cannot. It doesn't lie within me to come to Jesus. But the Holy Spirit has called me through the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts. What God has done for me in baptism is not only make me a believer, but then gives me the spirit so that I can live as a believer. That's how much God loves us and desires our salvation. That's how much God longs for us to live as his children in the world so that he does not simply leave us alone to flounder around daily in the world trying to be a follower of Jesus he gives us the spirit who if we will simply allow him to work will lead us in Christ in everything that we say and do of course the temptation to go our own way is very strong among us I mean that's what the devil tried to do to Jesus right after he was baptized out in the wilderness for 40 days. The devil tried to get Jesus to go his own way to try and act as if he knew better than the Father that his own purposes were more important than God. And that's what the devil does with us. Constantly trying to lead us away from our called purpose to live in Christ. To go our own way. To do what we think is best and right instead of trusting in the mercy and the grace of God in Jesus Christ given to us in the Holy Spirit. And that, of course, is where the church is so necessary. And I'm not talking just about the local congregation, although the local congregation is a very blessed place to be. The church, which is the body of Christ, is the place in which we can be strengthened and encouraged but also admonished and corrected when need be. It is a place where the faith is held in trust and inviolate from the days of the apostles until now. It is the place in which we gather not only to hear our forgiveness, but to be equipped to be witnesses to Jesus Christ. For to be a baptized child of God is indeed to be one who is sent. And we learn of our sending and are equipped for it within the body, within the church, in the community of the baptized. Being baptized is a challenge. A challenge to trust in the mercy and grace of God that he indeed forgives sins and that he has forgiven my sins. And to trust that the even greater challenge that God lays before me of being a living witness in the world is something that can be done. 
not by my own reason or strength, but in the reason and strength that comes through the Holy Spirit, that I can be a servant of Christ. I can live a Christian life outside the walls of the church. Because our baptism goes out the doors with us. It goes with us everywhere we go. We are clothed in Christ in our baptisms. And the Spirit encourages us to let that be known to whoever has ears or eyes to see. We may not convert thousands. We may not write the most important book on Christianity in the history of the world. But we may make a difference in the life of one other human being who is yet to come to the mercy and grace of God. And that may be why you have been baptized beyond your own forgiveness and assurance of salvation. You have been baptized to become the St. Paul or St. Peter or Martin Luther for one other human being who needs to hear the gospel who's longing to hear the gospel, who wants to believe that there is a God and that this God does indeed love them, you may be the message of God's love to that person and in so doing have fulfilled the mission God gave you in your baptism, equipped you with the Holy Spirit to accomplish that mission. So rejoice in your baptisms. Give God thanks that you are a baptized child of God. If you're comfortable with it, make the sign of the cross to remind you that you are baptized into the death and the resurrection of Jesus. If that doesn't make you comfortable, then keep a cross before you. Carry it with you around your neck, on your heart, hanging from the mirror in your car, wherever you can put a cross to remind you that you are a baptized child of God and that God through the Holy Spirit has called us all called us all into the mission of the church, into making Jesus Christ known, into letting others who linger in the darkness of sin and death begin to see the light of Christ, that God shines forth in our lives as well. For we're not just baptized for ourselves. We are baptized into the death and the resurrection of Jesus for the sake of our brothers and sisters who have yet to know him who have yet to be baptized, who have yet to join us in the mission of proclaiming Christ. Amen.